Thank you to everyone who is tuning in today to another episode of Dental Talk 360. We are so excited to bring this episode to you guys with our guest speaker, Marillo Calgaro. He is a master ceramist and very skilled at his craft, and he's going to be bringing us behind the scenes of uh, porcelain veneers and the craftsmanship behind it and how we blend it with patients and help explain the process to dentists and really make this more of a science and synergy of art as well. So thank you so much, Cole Garrow, thank for you. coming in. We really appreciate Pleasure. it. I uh, really want to get into a little bit about what brought you to work for high-end cosmetic dentistry and choose this ceramic skillship as, as a specialty. Right. So I will try to make like a long story short. Uh, I come from a dental technician family. So my father, my uncle, uh, many uncles, <laughs> uh, they're all on the on the field. So I started as a dental technician with my 14, 15 years old. Uh, and on that period of time, I was training, uh, try, trying to understand the profession. And when I was 18, to 19 years old, I started working on my, fa my father's lab in Brazil, where it's a production lab. He had around 60 employees, uh, and it was a, one of the biggest lab in Latin America, where they were working with a production. Like, uh, it's a production lab doing a lot of units per day, and I was never fitting right on that path of uh, speed and giving the production. So I wanted to be special at my craft, uh, so I started training to do customized work. So that that's the way that everything started. Uh, I wanted to do something really close to the natural tooth. So I was training and trying to make uh, uh, something special on my my work. That that's the long story short. That's beautiful, and yeah. it definitely shows that you love what you do. I love. Um, I think mm -hmm. that ceramists have a very special role in dentistry. I think that it's more important for us to discuss this as a dental profession because there's a lot that people don't know that goes on behind the scenes when it comes to customizing a smile, one that is perfectly fit for a patient to bring out their natural assets. And we have a wonderful team on this podcast crew who has a lot of experience as well in cosmetic dentistry. For those of you who don't know what porcelain veneers are, they are thin shells that go essentially on the front surface of your teeth, and they offer a minimally invasive solution to improving minor discolorations in your smile and really improving the overall aesthetics. But with that comes a lot of challenges that a lot of patients and dentists might not know goes behind the scenes. And so that's why having a ceramist here today to really explain the process and the difficulties that come along with it is very important. So I wanna talk a little bit about the beginning process when it comes to choosing a patient or discussing a patient, what their expectations are, and how are we gonna achieve that desired result between the dentist, the ceramist, and the patient? Because that dynamic is so important when it comes to cosmetic dentistry. That's true. Yep, so I wanted to um, tune in a little bit in this. So essentially, um, Ceramics is not just, well, not just for the aesthetics, but it's also, um, it built into the function, the overall function. So um, I'm gonna explain you guys a little bit about our protocol, um, Arapa Aesthetic. Uh, Murillo is um, our head ceramist at Arapa Aesthetic, and I had the pleasure and honor to work with you, and it's been incredible. It's been a, an incredible learning experience. So everything starts in the consult. So when you first talk to your dentist, um, you, everybody above 30 years old or so has some sort of dental work or a lot of dental work, whether it's um, a restoration, whether it's crowns, whether it's missing teeth and implants, whether it's just general wear. So uh, a lot of people think that uh, cosmetic dentistry <clears throat> is just purely cosmetic, but it's actually, it's actually not. It's about fixing a smile, rejuvenating a smile, or just stopping the process of uh, deterioration of your dentition and just kind of uh, bringing it back to where it used to be at some point and preventing it from going forward. So everything starts at the console. So when you come in, you kind of tell us your expectations, what you like. <clears throat> and as a cosmetic dentist, you have to put this all together and respect always biology and function, <clears throat> but also you have to listen to the patient and see what they want and you have to make your treatment in accordance to that. 
So everything starts in what we call the waxing, mm -hmm. um, which I actually spent the last month of waxing with Morello. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> he took me back yeah. to the basics. So pretty much waxing is whenever you put wax on top of the teeth to create this new appearance of the teeth, what this final smile is going to look like. So um, I like to call it our vision at this point. So patient comes in, tells us what they want. I create, I put it all together and I put my vision into it. Uh, then the patient comes in for the preparation day. So we'll prepare the teeth where we need. Uh, some teeth get prepared, some teeth don't get prepared. Every single tooth is different. Um, then the patient comes back the second day. They leave with temporaries that day, which is our prototype. They come back the next day and the next day we discuss uh, with the patient what they like, what they don't like. Uh, we talk about shape, we talk about color. Uh, and we put it all together and uh, we decide finally what we want and we give the green light on it. Once that happens, it gets passed to the ceramist. So now Murillo receives the case and now he has um, a prototype, a three-dimensional uh, blueprint, which is the temporaries, where he knows that he cannot make this longer, shorter, bring it out. So he has some guidelines into the fabrication. And as a master ceramist, it's his job to kind of envision what that patient used to look like or put it all together to create this new product that is going to fit, uh, it's gonna function correctly and it's also going to follow the aesthetic, the desired aesthetics of the patient. Which, uh, using that temporary. Using, using the that temporary, <clears throat> correct. So we're going to replicate that temporary <laughs> in something that we do that is very unique is that we have, since we are lucky enough to have the lab in-house, we have worked together a protocol that the ceramics replicates and I replicates and enhances our prototype that we created. So that way there's no surprises. And something that we do is at the time of insertion, we um, cut the temporaries in half. So from the center, from one side, we remove it and we place those final veneers and we always take a picture so that we can see that we have a one-to-one -one ratio in what we do. And then we insert the case, bring the patient back the next day, adjust minor adjustments on the bite. Um, but yeah. But that's the most important part, that test drive. The temporary. Which it's, a, it's important to get done. And just like there's analog versions of it through waxing, there's also digitized versions of that, which is with ExoCAD and designing the smile digitally. It all gives you the same function, but the key is using the, the patient's face experiences, what they want, listening to the patient as a <clears> whole <throat> to develop that perfect smile, which then Master Ceramics could then replicate and then add the beauty and the layers and the yeah. enamel. And they're just listening to what they want. Do they want it with translucencies or yeah. make it with more anatomy, et cetera? And that's where their artistry really comes in. Yeah, and I think that's the hardest part. That's to the be hardest honest, part. I mean, getting the shapes down <laughs> is one thing, but actually communicating the shade because there's so many different levels. So many layers. I mean, <clears throat> patients may not understand hue, chroma, value, and just to dumb it down, like, mm -hmm. Hue is basically, you know, the color. Mm -hmm. And then chroma is just like, all right, is this Tiffany blue or is this like a navy blue? Mm -hmm. And then value is the actual intensity. And then with that, you know, it's like sometimes you want translucency, sometimes you don't. And that's where like the value comes into play. Yeah. And it's just for me, because we actually we're blessed to have an in-house ceramist as well, too, to see that level, because when a shade is off because you're trying to do three veneers be conservative and not do the fourth just to save the patient, you know, just time and money and just be super conservative. It's priceless to have that ceramics come in and go, okay, I'm going to bake it to one, two more times and I'll nail that shade because the light, the angles, everything comes into play. And like you guys are artists on another level, something that I, I don't think AI will ever replicate because there's so many different factors that go into that. I would go back a little bit on the, the planning, uh, on the wax up. Uh, I think for any ceramist that is performing a case, I like to say that we need boundaries. We need limits where we can expand our creativity during that, uh, along that boundaries. Because if we don't have boundaries, you guys in the office, in the clinic, when you're trying something in the mouth, uh, you can have some very creative ceramics that is creating something that is going above the boundaries. Mm -hmm. And then you have problems. So mm -hmm. on the wax up and working on an in-house lab, uh, what we have to achieve is the first uh, idea of a smile design that when it goes into the patient's mouth uh, as a mock-up, the dentist should spend 
as much time as possible uh, to nail that smile design because that was, you have the information of the patient, you have the face, you have the lip movements, the choreography of the smile. So it's with you. So if you can nail that process of getting the wax up and turning into a good provisional, that is what is important for us as a technicians. So when we get that information, we have a frame of what you can be creative. Uh, so you can go until this point. And then we have to bring life. Uh, this is what Dr. App always say, like we have to bring to life the temporaries. And for that, the boundaries are important. Length of the centrals, volume, how much you are expanding the arch, and then the color has to fit in that boundaries. Yeah. So then the creativity of the ceramist has some, some place to stop, otherwise we get crazy. Yeah. And then the, the case goes wrong. Exactly. So we have to be always connected with that. Yeah. I think it's extremely technical when patients have darker teeth, or one tooth is darker than the other, and then mm -hmm. it's incredibly important to have photography, communication, mm -hmm. to be able to mask those colors. Yeah. in order to give everything a uniform shape appearance, yeah. that's very difficult so that's kudos to you guys for what you challenging do part. because it's incredible yeah so incredible. i think we should also and i'm going to let fetty go into this a little more i want you to tell patients the difference between materials and the difference between a customized smile design and a generic because nowadays we have a lot of people with veneers um, a lot of people that go to an office and they go in the morning and they leave with veneers in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just want patients to really know how much work goes into this. I'm going to let Fetty kind of explain. And then I want, if you can, Murillo, yeah. uh, just kind of go into the intricacy of actually making a smile, how much time it takes you to do that and all the work that goes behind it and the difference between something custom made and something digitally converted to life, essentially. So, so let's go into the same day stuff because recently I've had, unfortunately, a few patients that I'm redoing their smiles because they've had same day techniques done that unfortunately didn't give them the correct bite because the planning wasn't there. And there's a quote <clears throat> that I love, it's like, uh, not planning is planning to fail. So you need to be able to look at that person and see why did things break? Do they need to raise the bite? Do you need to expand the corridor or the arch to make things brighter? Uh, but more than likely, it's using a digital library where they have a library of teeth shapes and they kind of just select from it at whim. They're not really focusing on using the photos of the face, the dimensions of the face, breaking down the face into all the parts that it takes to really shape the teeth into the size with length that that person needs, which is part of the planning when you're doing a bespoke or customized tooth. We've talked about it before. It's like a custom tailored suit. You could buy an off the rack suit, but it's never going to fit Good. just as right as when you get it perfectly mm -hmm. customized, right? Yeah. Or a pair of shoes that's <clears throat> perfectly made to you. It takes many, many visits to get that perfectly tailored, yeah. right? Whereas these people are giving you an off the rack suit. You're yeah. basically coming in, they're going to give you whatever randomized tooth shape. And some of these offices don't even have a library to choose from. They have a one tooth, one size. And what <laughs> they're cutter. doing, and what they're yeah, doing yeah, yeah, is yeah. zooming in and out. And pinching it. <laughs> and pinching it in and out and hoping that it fits. Yeah. Now, what can that lead to? It leads to gum disease. It leads yes. to bad bites, teeth yeah, breaking, yeah, yeah. off colors. Because now, again, that layering process, that fine detail is not yeah. there. So, yes, they are recreating these patients smiles but at what cost right, right. because yeah. there's no planning so when you're doing a case as i like to say no offense to anybody else the right way yeah and you're using the photography you're using the patient in the mouth like murillo just said and executing the temporaries and executing the design in the mouth mm -hmm. prior to fabrication making sure that one the patient's satisfied because at the end of the day that's who matters yeah. right yeah. Two, that the bite is good, that none of the temporaries are breaking, that their bites, that their speech is good, that aesthetically, when you look at the photos of them and those temporaries, it matches their facial dynamic, lip dynamics. There's a lot of components to this. It's not only just looking at photos, it's taking video, seeing the full uh, harmony of the smile, seeing where the lips go. Do they have a high lip line? Do you smile and see your gums? It's a different plan. Mm -hmm. You have a low lip line. Mm -hmm. so. 
you need to really plan according to all of that, <clears throat> creating a temporary that matches that person's face perfectly, bite perfectly, and then giving that information to the technicians using those boundaries for them to do their magic. Yeah. And understanding that preparation design, the way the teeth are in the arch, everything matters as far as the shades. So if a patient wants to go from super dark teeth to lighter teeth, having the communication of saying, hey, we're going to have to prepare these teeth more. Mm -hmm. And there's a formula for this. Because mm -hmm. if they try to be conservative, then you're going to have that patient that's going to have white teeth, dark one, white one, and then they won't be happy. So ultimately, it's listening to the communication, the planning, executing the design so that then the lab could really recreate everything that you did in a customized, bespoke, tailored fashion. Unlike an off the rack, I'm just going to make it milled out of one piece of block porcelain, which they exist. There's Emax, there's Zirconia, and they mill it out of a block. But it, it loses that translucency, that real life. It just kind of looks blah. Right? It's not like you look at it and you don't even see it. I always say cosme true cosmetics, no one should ever tell that you had any work mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. But I could see an Emax a mile away. Mm -hmm. I could see a Zirconia a mile away <laughs> right, with my trained eye. But however, when you're doing a properly done feldspathic, it's amazing. And they're just better. This honestly. brings me, actually, this is a lot of people don't know <clears throat> the different materials that exist. Yeah. And um, I think that's so important, not only for dentists, but if, especially those who are not practicing cosmetic dentistry, to know that feldspathic exists, to know that there's Emacs and there's lithium disilicate. These are different types of porcelain materials. And you need to know specifically when to use them. And so this is also very important with the ceramics because the ceramics can also give their best opinion and advice on what they recommend. Mm -hmm. So could you talk a little bit more about the value and the beauty behind Feldspathic and what people might not know about it, especially patients? And also a little bit of materials. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I, I'll go back to what you were saying. Um, <coughs> so once you set boundaries, like you made the temporaries, temporaries are good, patient is happy. Uh, so we can have a lot of mistakes using digital dentistry mm -hmm. or digital workflow. Because when we are talking about uh, milling uh, ceramics that can be lithium desilicate, it can be feldspathic ceramic as well. And what we used to say, uh, copy-paste dentistry. Mm -hmm. Like many people think, okay, the dentist designed a very good temporary, so now just send to a digital lab where they're gonna copy-paste your temporaries and everything is gonna be fine. It's not like that. Because when you have a preparation and you have the temporaries, uh, when we go to a milling process, when we go to a digital milling process, uh, you also have boundaries. So if your temporary is, let's say, on a cervical or on a vestibular, uh, doesn't have enough thickness, the machine has a minimum thickness to mill anything. So digital labs, they are just copying, paste, and then when the machine is going to mill uh, that design, uh, let's say that you need 0 0.3 millimeters on the cervical, but the minimum thickness on the machine is 0 0.5. Or sometimes you have you need to have on the ceramic 0 0.2 on the area, and then the machine is going to mill 0 0.5. Everything's become bulky, and the boundaries are gone. So that where, in my point of view, uh, the dentistry of today, of copy-paste dentistry or library dentistry, it's giving sometimes it's going over the boundaries and then you have a uh, not ideal design. Uh, we have different materials to choose. We, we can use lithium desilicate, milled, but what comes into a customization, we have to take that milling process and we have to shape it by hand to be able to have that uh, shape on the boundaries that this dentist set. Mm -hmm. uh, Feldspathic ceramics is something that we layer uh, from inside, like we would say, like in layers uh, from the dentine, we are recreating three-dimensional colors. So it comes to the experience of the ceramist uh, to put all the colors and all the details, but being connected with that boundary that we will not go over the limits. Uh, and in terms of ceramics, uh, of course, uh, we can have digital restorations that can be very good, uh, but we need to be always thinking about color that we need, uh, if we need to block something, 
uh, if there is any dark stump shade that we need to take care of. So the digital restorations has a limit because there is a monoblock. It's uh, something that is uh, has a unique and uh, homogeneous color. And if we need to block something, it will be impossible. So then we go to a feldspathic ceramics that we can block on a very small amount of porcelain. We can block any stump shade and recreate all these internal colors, the three-dimensional colors, denting, how much uh, you, I, I like to say that we have uh, a tooth morphology and we have a color morphology. Tooth morphology is just the shape, three-dimensional shape. But the tooth, col uh, the, the ceramic colors, it comes on uh, uh, three-dimensional colors, denting, how much denting we will have to give the reflection, how much enamel we will have to give the absorption of light. It's a combination of a lot of mm -hmm. small details. Correct. So for patients, uh, what he's referring to is the tooth has different layers. So you have the dentin, you have the enamel, which is what you guys see. The outside of the tooth is usually uh, whiter. And then the dentin is the layer underneath. So the tooth, by having different layers, the ceramic should also replicate that. So whenever you have a stain on your tooth, you have a tooth that's darker than the other. With the milling process, the machine is just going to mill out of a block that is going to be like you said, uh, homogeneous everywhere is going to be the same color. So there's no way to block it. And the other way, since you're literally painting, because it's, it's a powder, you mix it with a liquid, and Marillo sits with a paintbrush and with a, not a paintbrush. Uh, yeah, paintbrush. It's a paintbrush. Okay, yeah. And then he just <laughs> puts the little details in the little different mixes. So to block out a certain area, let's say that you have a tiny piece of the tooth that's darker than the other side. So in that area, he's going to apply a different type of ceramic that is going to block that color from being able to, for, for you to being able to see it. And it's also going to give different layers. So every time that he puts a layer, he puts that tooth in the oven and it comes out. And you mentioned that in general, you can have anywhere from six to 16 layers or so. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, so imagine the process of this um, usually takes you how long to create um, 10, 10 veneers, which is the usual number. It's about two to three days. So wow. two to three days of work. him working on this smile, sitting there, just working on one case, looking at the photos, looking at the size, always staying within boundaries. But at least he's in Miami Beach now. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Before it was in New York. Yeah. Now it's <laughs> but the, the customization yeah. that goes with the smile. Uh, so we have different kind of smiles. We have one that patients show a lot of teeth and they want to make it smaller. Yeah. So we have the chance to have more translucency on the incisal edge mm -hmm. that will make the teeth look smaller. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we have patients that they, they have like uh, fillers and they are not showing too much teeth. So we can customize our layering process, yeah. giving more denting, more reflection, or giving more translucency that makes it smaller. If we are going to a digital uh, copy paste dentistry, cannot they will all look that. the same. Yeah, yep. you cannot do that. Do that. That's do really that. the big difference, right? Yeah, so it, it shows the people that are listening that um, this is why it's so important to one, go to an office or a practice or a dentist that practices this style of dentistry because you're going to get exactly what you're looking for. And yes, there are costs involved in it. Correct. And everything's going to have a cost, whatever. But again, you, you, you get what you pay for, right? So when you're looking for a customized result, when you're looking for something that's tailor fit to you, that is thought process, that is worked so hard on, this is what makes the difference between those gorgeous smiles that they see on the magazines by the superstars versus yeah. someone on the street with a cut and paste that kind of looks like a tile, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> it is what it is. And unfortunately, that's the way it has to be. But this is the, the right path. Mm -hmm. right? And, yeah. and it's an incredible art form. It, it's such an honor, one, to have you here with us today. Yep. Thank you. Because you're one of the greats mm -hmm. in the world. And it's, uh, and it's an incredible art and craft that I love to see the passion and the growth. Because as a cosmetic dentist, we need you to make our patients mm -hmm. smile. It's a team, yeah. right? I and I think that the communication between a dentist and a lab technician is the most important. And I'm gonna knock on my dentist for a minute because you need to communicate with your lab technicians. You need to communicate, is the preparation good enough? Mm -hmm. Is the design good enough? Yes. And they will help you get better. I spent oh, yeah. a greater mm -hmm. part of my 15 year career listening to lab technicians yeah. 
going to lab offices, seeing mm -hmm. other dentists work on a bench and having an understanding of this is what works and this is what doesn't and why. Yep. Well, so that's well, good. Well, what do you appreciate the most about this whole communication process when it comes to what the dentist is telling you specifically? What is number one? What I love on this communication, and I would, I would say that is the most important way to communicate with the technician is. So any dentist that talks to me and asks me my opinion, and what would you do in this case? He's giving me, first of all, power of decision, and he's giving me responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I will be more connected with his mind, mm -hmm. and I will be more responsible with whatever I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. So this will make the case go into the next level. Mm -hmm. When there is no communication, just like, oh, do it like this. Yeah. So there is no, uh, technicians normally they don't understand, they, they are not close to the case. Mm -hmm. So communication is everything. <clears throat> we don't have patients on our hands, we don't have the mouth, mm -hmm. we have models. So, and if there is no communication in terms of giving responsibility to the technician or understanding the technician's field, uh, this, will this will make everything very difficult. So when we have this, if Oscar comes to me and say, Murilo, what do you think about this case? What should we do? And then I will give my opinion. If I'm giving mm -hmm. my opinion, I am jumping into the case. So I am jumping into your mind and we are calibrating together. Mm -hmm. And this calibration will give me tools and will give me responsibility to be connected with the final result. Mm -hmm. What it doesn't happen often, like uh, je dentists just send cases to the lab, yeah, and uh, there is no. But they expect no you to do it. Yeah. And this is when things. Fail. And then when it's over bulk, they're like, "Well, you didn't reduce it." <laughs> and <laughs> you know, and as a technician, if I am involved in the clinical process, it will give me knowledge of things that normally a technician who is working in the lab, they don't have this opportunity to talk to the dentist. So there is less knowledge. There is not less possibilities to to achieve the greatest result and as as uh, as much as we technicians know about dentistry the better we will be a technician yeah. as much yes. the dentists know about oh, yeah. dental technicians yes. craft mm -hmm. the better the dentist we will yeah. be so yeah. it's a, and also life. for dentists you also have to know that whenever you know not everybody's lucky enough to have an in-house lab and i understand and sometimes you know we've all used outside labs <laughs> And in general, just a tip for you, um, when you send a case and your prescription is a sentence or is whatever, <laughs> the person that's going to do your case is the least experienced in the lab. When you send oh, yeah. a long prescription, very detailed, detailed. with photos, <laughs> with everything, that lab is going to put somebody that has more experience yeah. to work on that case. Yep. So something that I do, I, use, I always send everything. I, I write a long prescription. And then the other thing that I do is I get in connect with the lab. I speak with the manager and I tell them that I want to have a FaceTime consult with the technician. And that's when we sit and go back and forth and discuss the case. Even before we started, this is before we started the case. And then I do that again afterwards. And the other thing is that you cannot have pride in this profession. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with asking your technician what you should do. I've had cases with Murillo that I, before I even start, I go to him and I'm like, what do you think? And it's not that I don't know what to do. It's just like, I want to get another perspective because I am preparing for you to finish a product. Mm -hmm. So if I don't give you the correct preparation, then you're not going to be able to give me the correct results. Mm -hmm. And I've had, you know, chances where I've been designing a smile and I've walked Murillo or Sandro to the chair and I've shown them the preps before. And I said, mm -hmm. what do you think? And they have told me, reduce more here, do this, that. Exactly. And there's no shame in that guys, yeah. you know? It's, it's just making you better. Mm -hmm. And what Murillo said, the more you know about their side of the craft, the better you're gonna become as a dentist, the more you're gonna understand the craft and the more you're going to get better at what you do. So yeah. this whole month that I've been waxing, I've realized I've learned how to move line angles, how to do this, and all yeah. these things that I'm learning outside the mouth, when I am now in the mouth, I can replicate that with the bird, because I, now I know what to look for. I've, I've gone to Murillo with the, I spent a week doing 10 teeth. <laughs> 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 I went to him the first time, he looks at it, and he's like, holy crap, <laughs> we gotta work on this. 
<laughs> and then he was like, do this, this, and that. And then finally, <laughs> I showed him the other day. He's like, wow, this is actually pretty good. We're not done yet, but still. <laughs> and they, they uh, I think someone saw in the office, like, oh, who did this box? It was Rafael. Like, no, Oscar. No. Uh, <laughs> <Rafael>. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. So I learned, you, uh, you know, I mean, and that's something that I want to continue to do. And then uh, I always said at some point, I would really love to lay your porcelain. So that's my next goal. And I just, you know, I challenge dentists to really spend the time on those stamps. And I challenge yeah. patients mm -hmm. to really demand, be happy with the temporaries and do not accept the, oh, the lab is going to fix it. You're going to see the magic happen at the end. Yeah. The temporaries, is, they're not, they don't reflect the Can finals. Can I say this though? The way the technology is going, printing, man, is, is, is about to take over. I see the way it's headed point, and the right? way it's trending. Be and I'm, I'm because I used to be a DJ back in the day. It's I used to DJ with vinyl, and it's funny because I got into an accident. Um, my car is totaled, and someone's like, "Oh, I see a minivan in your future." I'm like, "Bro, I took my driver's test in a 1996 <laughs> Nissan Quest GXE. I know about the minivan life, right?" <laughs> But when I used to DJ, I'd have to set up my turntables, bring all my records. I had to know where every record was and memorize this, right? But now you just bring a USB and your little controller and you got thousands of songs and you can do that, right? When I, when I started taking aesthetic advantage with Dr. Rosenthal, Dr. App and all those guys, 3D printing really wasn't a big thing, right? So we, I had to learn how to do the Lux attempt, the waxing ups, the cutting back, the, you know, additive reduction and then seated in the patient's mouth and then hand carve it. I mean, I, I, we just did that this week. We, that's all we were doing at the office. But now I'm seeing the trends where these printers are going and then with ExoCAD and listen, you, you can't have two left hands, right? Being saying that it's not your dominant hand, but the printing is going to take it to a next level where it's going to make it easier. Just like but, DJing is easier. But No, you still have to have the eye and, and, and the boundaries and the foundation. But it's gonna make it easy. But the layering, <laughs> the layering and the artistry behind it yes. is what makes it beautiful. I know, but you know what though? I'm I'm gonna have to argue with you on this because Fine. what's gonna happen is okay, remember like back oil paintings, right? You have mm -hmm. to have this super talented artist. So you sit stationary and they sit there and paint with their oils, mm -hmm. right? I can go take a printer. I remember when printers were black and white, you had to pay 25 cents. You go to the library, you had your, you know, Dewey Decimal System, you had your card, library card, you check out the book, you take 25 cents and you make the black and white. It wasn't even in color because when I had my book reports, I had to get yeah. Crayola crayons and, and paint them in, right? Now these printers, laser printer, printing out millions of colors. I, I can see that in the future. It, it'll be 3D. Why not? It'll be way down the road. I don't yeah. know. Next three to five years, though. No, I, I three to five that. years, bro. We'll, we'll agree to disagree right there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. This, the, tech not, the tech is going crazy. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> even if you have that print technology, it's going to no, make no, no, it no, no, easier. No. It's so, going to make it easier. Yeah, yeah Correct. Yeah, but, so it's okay to have your temporaries printed or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, just yeah. sit there and look at them and make the adjustments because 3D to actual patient to actual person, you're mm -hmm. going to have discrepancies. And oh, most no, people no, no, no. see yeah, the temporaries yeah, yeah, yeah. and oh, they look great. Boom, that's it. But you got to really sit and you got to train your eye to see. Mm -hmm. So you got to know what you don't know. And that's the most exactly. important thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it's there is something yeah. as well that, uh, about digital dentistry or even uh, whatever you do on your mock-up console that is tricky. Uh, sometimes mock-up can go anywhere, everywhere. It can have different thicknesses. You can have everything on the, uh, with a flowable composite mm -hmm. or a, a bisacrylic uh, material. So when you have that and the patient likes, it can be dangerous yeah. because if you are uh, uh, crossing the boundaries of thickness, sometimes you can change a tooth position with a, a flowable composite or with a bisacrylic uh, material, but the ceramic will not be able to replicate that because it's too thin or it's uh, th there is boundaries as well on whatever is mm -hmm. done being done in the patient's mouth. So I used to say we were we were sitting with Andy mm -hmm. and we were talking about that. Sometimes yeah. the mock-up looks amazing and the ceramist will not be able to replicate biologically, them. yeah. Biologically is not ideal yeah. because it's going on top of the tissue or <laughs> it's too thin even a feldspathic ceramic is it's hard to copy that. So that's why the conversation between dentists 
and technician yeah. to use handmade dentistry or printed uh, 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 solutions. If you don't know what you're doing and the boundaries, mm -hmm. you have problems. Right. Yeah, you know what? If you actually would combine CBCT and the intraoral scan and design the mock-up with, you know, active movements, you yeah. know, digital articulator, I think that will be like... I already do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean... no, 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 CB... oh, no, 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 you know, the CBCT and all that stuff. I yeah. already do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, but, but, but <laughs> it, you know, to go over this point on the dentist side, you know, one thing that we do at the office is when we sit these temporaries, a lot of people just place the temporaries and they lock them in and they don't look at them. So one thing that we do is we remove the temporaries from the mouth. And when you remove those temporaries, you can put them by the light and you can see the thickness exactly. of the temporary right. because That's it's like Marillo right. said, there's things that you can do with the resin, with the flowable composite, when you're making the temporaries yeah. that you can add to an area, do certain, but then in the porcelain, you cannot do it because it's gonna be too thin. Yeah. So by you examining your temporaries, you're able to see if you're respecting yeah. those limits, those guidelines that you need uh, for the porcelain. Remember, everything that we do is I'm preparing for you and you're preparing for me. So if I don't give you something, you're not going to be able to give me that product back. So that's why there's always has to be checks and balances. I'm so happy you said that. Because <laughs> how many times did I tell you a long time ago? Bro. Do the temporaries outside the mouth. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to freaking lock them Do, in. Pull them out. No, you outside pull the out. mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll see. And because everybody is like, Fetty, how do you how do you do your temporaries? I was like, I put them in and then I take them out and I measure every <laughs> single yeah. spot. And then I contour it, one, because you're not going to mess up the gums because tissue is the issue, we all know. Yeah. And if you lock them in, you're going to get jig jags in there and you're going to bleeding. So that helps with that one, especially on delivery day. Two, you're able to measure that thickness. And what's the biggest issue that you'll get? You'll get patients that have a little bulge in the middle. And then you'll seat that veneer that he worked very hard to replicate. It's and then great. it'll be a dark spot. <laughs> yeah. And then that person is going to be pissed. Because that patient's going to look at it and forget everything he did. The whole smile looks good, but doc, that one dot right there, that one, I don't like it. No, it throws the whole thing off. Now you, now How you many just... hours did one veneer take you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and then it's almost so difficult yeah. to replicate that shade, that trans the layering, because everything is in flow, you know? So doing the temporaries, like you said, outside the mouth, check and balance. Make sure that everything's done ideally so that when they go to do it, it's done perfectly. It's, I'm so happy you said that. It's for Thank so you. long. For I, so long. It took me three years. <laughs> but I got there. Oh, there, you go. there you go. That's the we're, we're fortunate that we, you know, cosmetic dentistry is so diverse, but also porcelain veneers can be super thin. Yeah. And um, that also comes into play when um, shade matching is, you know, a huge component of it. Yeah especially on your end. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to communicating with a patient, how do you prefer the dentist communicate to you mm -hmm. and to the patient about what are the, what are the shade expectations here and um, how natural do we want this? Where do we want the translucencies? So talk a little bit more about the, the shade matching process. Shade matching process, when we are talking about singles, mm -hmm. yeah, that is the hardest Understood. shade matching uh, uh, challenge. Uh, so what we need is a good picture of the natural tooth remaining with uh, the best shade guide that is close to the color you were expecting. And then for a ceramist, we're going to get this information, this picture. And normally I, you, I change the contrast on the picture. So I increase the contrast. I reduce the brightness on the picture. So in that way, we're going to saturate uh, whatever is a yellow color, uh, or translucency, we're gonna we're gonna see it better. It it's gonna make a demarcation of all the internal colors, and then we will know how to rebuild these internal colors with the ceramic, and we will have the shade guys uh, as a comparison for us to to mm -hmm. go to that point. When it's a full arch, uh, we just need to know how much reflection and how uh, and the hue we want for the final color. So if we want something with a very high reflective surface is where we're going to build more uh, reflective colors inside. So our denting will be more extended to the final form. Uh, so in that way, the light hits the denting, reflects, and we will have more punch of color. Mm -hmm. If we want more translucency, 
we have to see the uh, uh, if our stump shade is good. We don't have to block anything. We just create uh, uh, a real reproduction of a natural tooth. The right amount of denting, a transitional denting on the incisal edge, and then we can create translucency as well. If we have any dark stump shade and the patient wants something very reflective, what is good, so we just block and we create something, uh, uh, we create the enamel not with a lot of uh, volume, so we have reflection. If the patient has a dark stump shade and he wants uh, absorption of light or translucency, it's where it's a little trick here because we need to block and we need to have the translucency. So it's two opposite directions. We're gonna block on top of the prep and then we have to try on the edges, uh, on the frame of the restoration, we're gonna create some translucency to give more depth of color. Mm. So it's, it, it depends on what is the goal in the case. But uh, with third spatic ceramics, for sure, uh, we are able to customize on the different uh, different ways. That's amazing. And not every yeah. case can be felt spathic. In not every no. case, no. right? No. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. It, They're it's, beautiful. It, there's there's uh, limitations, and then knowing the stump shade as he's talking about, or what your tooth color is underneath. So you remove the enamel, and some doctors think I'm going to remove a little bit, but they don't realize it. You go deeper and deeper. It gets darker and darker. Sometimes. Yeah. So you have to prepare properly for those things and to give them the space to layer those blocking components. But I think the communication needs to be set through the patient, making sure that the patient is happy with what color has been selected on a full arch scale. And if you're replicating a natural tooth, to have the proper documentation, photography, communication with your lab, talking to them and knowing, letting the patient know that one, if it's a single central, that's the hardest tooth in the mouth to replicate. Yeah. Mm -hmm all over again. It's yeah. very, very difficult. Yeah. So setting that expectation that, hey, we're going to get it as close to it as possible, but sometimes it gets very difficult depending on the person. I know patients that have blue hues and grays, especially if they're bleaching patients and then their teeth have that blue opalescence to it. Yeah. If they bleach too much, it gets very complicated. So um, I, th I think it's incredible, especially how they powder those shades on. Come on. I look at some of those photos and I'm like, they're powdering with red, attach yellows. Here. Attach a photo right it's here. Incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. We're going to do it. Yeah. It's just sometimes I'm, I look at the stuff that they do and I'm like, how? Yeah. How do you do that? Because it's, yeah, know, it's I, just, a I just love the art and I love what I do. So it's, it's just an incredible thing to see. It's a beauty. Now at the office, I am the tour guide. <laughs> so every patient that comes and it's in, it's well. It's well. I can tell. I've been getting better. I've been yeah, getting better. better yeah. Every patient that comes in, <clears throat> One of the things that I do is I always give him a tour of the clinic and I give him a tour of the lab and I take him through the process from the right. wax station to Murillo. And then I always catch him doing something and it's, he's repetitive because every day it's like three, four, five people that I walk through the office. <laughs> Murillo's always working on something. And then, you know, I, I tell him the whole story and they see it. And for patients, it's like eye opening to be able to, because, you know, they don't know what goes what is happening, how that tooth is being made, and by them seeing it, it's like, wow, like, this is art, and it's, it really is. You know how I was doing single units? Uh, not here, because most, most of what we do is uh, rehabilitation, like it's full mouth. But uh, back in Brazil, uh, I was always doing single centrals or single laterals, any single tooth. I was making one first bake of the ceramic, with all the internal colors, denting, transitional dentings, mamelons, whatever, trying in the patient's mouth, taking a picture to decide what we're gonna do on the enamel bake. And to match a single central, uh, sometimes it takes like two, three tries. Yeah. It's not, it's not That's first. That's the hardest thing. Because you have to recreate internal, uh, internal opacity, internal translucency, internal everything. Yeah. So that's a, the best way to match. Uh, if I have to say the best way to do it, Ask your technician to do one bake, send to you, try, take a picture, send it back to him. Mm -hmm. Or if you are working in an in-house lab, ask the patient to stay for a longer period of time mm -hmm. so the technician can try and match it. Yeah. I did it a couple of times with, with Mike and it worked. Not really setting awesome. patient expectations. That's yeah. That's good. Yeah. It's awesome. Very important. Yeah. It's good work, takes time. That's, That's what good. it is. <laughs> and you have to have a, a true artist. 100%. And I think Murillo is one of the best ceramists in the world. And I'm, like I said, I'm very honored to work with you. And he's very artistic to the point 
You know, you know his 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 wax because he's letting me borrow his wax. I think that's why the wax the waxing came out so good because I was using his instrument. Wait, Oscar, is that what you're putting in your hair too? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same wax. So the wax comes like in a little round can, and you open it, and it has wax in it. His waxing can has a tooth wax in it. So he's going he wax like he carved a tooth inside. Uh, <laughs> it's actually I saw like, that. like I a mole. about that. Fucking beautiful. Wow. Like, <laughs> I like open. I was like, holy crap, there's like a tooth here. Like I'm a, we'll, we'll take a picture. We'll put it so people can see it. But it's incredible. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah. It's evident that you definitely love what you do. Oh, and yeah. um, I, I would love to ask you what is um, uh, what is your favorite part about what you do? And then what is the biggest challenge behind what you do? The biggest challenge, the biggest challenge is the time. Uh, that, that's mm. always the biggest challenge because if you have time, you can do whatever yeah. you are seeing. Yeah. Uh, and the biggest thing for me is, uh, I, I believe that is one of the biggest gifts I have, uh, is the ability to see. Uh, so I trained along my 25 years being a dental technician. I, I've, I've been trained to see things. Um, when you see things, uh, you send it to your brain, and then you you got to send this to your hands, and then you're going to practice. So for me, seeing things uh, and sharing information to see other things, it, it just amplifies uh, the possibility to have a good work. So well, the biggest thing for me is that I can see uh, sometimes more than other people see. Yeah, and I'm happy true. about that. Very and, true. and to replicate replicate that is a is a forever uh, craft. You have mm -hmm. to try to make it better every day. And how, how do you think patients can seek out high quality cosmetic dentists and and know that it's it's a right fit for them? <laughs> That's a tough question. Good question. Mm -hmm. They yeah, come to up aesthetic. Come to up aesthetic. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Not an ad. No. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough question. Yeah. Yeah. Oscar. Yeah, there's um, multiple variables. Too, no, I mean, sure. I, I think that you, it's, I'm going to use, once again, um, the tattoo um, idea. You have to find the artist that does what you like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every dentist is an artist. Every ceramist is an artist. So you have to, you have to feel good about what you see. And there's people that honestly, like, they're happy with whatever, and mm -hmm. that's that's fine. Yeah. So as a patient, you just have to be very diligent into where you're going, uh, not just about the aesthetics that the person has on their Instagram or whatever, but also feel comfortable in the place that you're going to. Yeah. Uh, go to a clean place, to somewhere that you're gonna feel nice, because from this point on, it's a marriage. Yep. yep. You know, a, a, a smile, people ask how long it lasts. In general, you can shoot it for about 15, 20 years. Uh, so you're going to be seeing that dentist for, for a while. And it's not just what you did today. It's not about doing your smile and bye. No, you have to follow up. You have to get your hygiene. So something that we do is like one, this patient gets treatment done with us. They're part of our family. So we welcome them and we want to see them at least twice a year for x-rays, to see them, to clean the teeth, to put the maintenance on it. So you have to feel comfortable with that office and you need to pick an office that is going to back you at every step of the way. Yeah. That is something were to happen, they're gonna be there for you and they're gonna take care of you and they're gonna make you feel welcome and comfortable. I'm glad you said that, I'm gonna piggyback on that. Cause that's the biggest thing is making them trust you, mm -hmm. feeling comfortable knowing that you have their back, mm -hmm. Yeah. right? And that's the biggest thing that a lot of our colleagues unfortunately don't do is I have a patient that Sometimes all they wanted was a callback. You yeah. know, if they send you it, like I personally, my patients all have my cell phone. Same Not here. Not one time Same here. do they call me randomly or text me randomly. And you That's handle right. situations yep. on the spot, you handle them. Yeah. Yep. And when mm -hmm. you do that and you give them peace of mind, that develops that trust. So when they're going through a process like this, yeah. knowing that the dentist that you're gonna see one does bespoke custom fit dentistry tailored to them using amazing ceramics, amazing labs, amazing office in a clean, healthy environment. But two, that they're there for you, right? That you're not just a number. And yeah. unfortunately, uh, a lot of people and a lot of colleagues 
to them, yeah, their patients are just a number. They might not admit it, but it is what it is. Yeah. So, um, but making sure that every single person, all of my patients, every single one, they are my family. And I love that you said that. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I think that's truly what separates everything. You have to have it all in order to give somebody the proper dentistry, the yeah. quality health care. Is at mm -hmm. the end, we to all took an oath here. Yeah. And it's to do no harm and it's to give them the proper health care, period. Yeah. So making sure that they're healthy and making sure that that patient knows that after you got your smile design, if you don't take care of it, it could fail. Exactly. Mm -hmm. like, so, like Apple says, you don't take a Ferrari. No, you don't take a Ferrari off roading. <laughs> exactly. Not even the SUV one, the yeah. pure song. <laughs> yeah. So take care of your smiles, making sure that the office that you're with has your back, that the dentist that you're seeing is taking care of you no matter what, and you'll have the smile of your face. And dreams. you know what's also really important? Um, not only is this profession very difficult, but cosmetic dentistry is very challenging. And one thing that patients can pay attention to during a initial consultation or visit with a dentist is see how the dentist speaks to you about the process, the case, the details behind it. Do they have passion behind their craft? There you go, 100%. 100%. Passion is probably the number one most important part of being a high quality cosmetic dentist. And um, if you can see passion in behind your, your dentist, then the chances that they're gonna take more time to do the right work, high quality work, mm -hmm. and really make sure that you're getting the result that you deserve and, and desire, um, it's all with that that initial passion that you can see a dentist. And then has. secondarily, knowing that they're not only going to be passionate about that, they're going to be passionate yeah. enough about the process to have too. Yep. an amazing team. Yeah, yeah. exactly. To do the whole work because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. dentistry is a team effort. Yes. Yep. It starts in the front desk with yep. the hostess, and then it goes all the way through. Yep. But in cosmetic dentistry, it's really a lab technician to dentist teamwork. Yeah. And without us, yeah. those things don't happen. Yeah. So I think the yeah. biggest elephant in the room is is price at the end of the day. Yeah. It's like yeah, why is this guy yeah. right. you know, veneers eight hundred dollars and why is this guy's veneers five, six thousand yeah. dollars? But I mean the take home message is it's always cheaper to have it done right the first time. A hundred percent. That's it. Yeah. 100%. Because your time is invaluable. Forget about if yeah. you paid one, two, three, four, five thousand dollars. You get it in one first shot. That's it. Yep. You're done. Yeah. But if you have to keep coming back for yeah. revisions, 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 your time, your money, your attempts, I mean, it's it's priceless to have that peace of mind, yep. knowing that you had someone that is passionate, obsessed about their craft, not just him, but the entire team. You got the ceramist, the front desk, the hygienist, the dentist. Everyone's obsessed with what they're doing. So you know that level right there yeah. is and if, and if you're investing in yourself, you want to invest in the best. Yes, of right? course. So exactly. Of course. That's the key. And it's your health at the end of the day. It is. It's an investment regardless. Right. It, it is. is. You're saying something yeah. very interesting uh, that, that makes me think about uh, what I do every day. Is when I get a case, uh, I'm not just doing a case. I'm connecting to the patient. Mm -hmm. yep. it's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's really very <laughs> profound. Yeah. Yep. Because yeah. Mm -hmm. we, I sit with the case like three, four days. Mm -hmm. And what I am what I am doing there is not only doing veneers. I am thinking how it will interact with the patient's mouth, how it's gonna feel in the patient's mouth. So mm -hmm. I am I'm sitting there on that patient for three, four days, sometimes even more, mm -hmm. uh, trying to really make something that will really work. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and this is for me the most important thing. Like really be connected uh, 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 and what you say. Like and to, to me also, yeah. so you know this because sometimes they, I don't feel like a lot of dentists tell you this. That patient probably came in with a social emotional issue mm -hmm. and maybe they weren't happy. Maybe they couldn't get a job mm -hmm. or they couldn't get a date. And now our work as a team just changed that person's life. life. Yeah. It's transforming. Yeah. So that's why I love what I do so much because yeah. at the end of the day, I think of the end result and mm -hmm. seeing them look at it, seeing the work that you put in, and now they could smile with yeah. confidence. Yeah. Dude, that's life changing. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it that's is. what it is about. Every case that I do is my first case. That's right. I would say that. Because mm -hmm. that first case that you get as a dentist is where you want to just home run it. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're so passionate about your See. first case.
Funny it you sounds like my boy it's funny you say you do that because I don't tell that to patients. They ask me how many times have you done this? <laughs> no, I, I just mean like. I know. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, like when I take for twelve case, years, <laughs> for me is like that is my passion. Thing. The passion never stops. Yes, exactly. I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. He has a lot of passion. Yes, he has a lot of passion. Yeah, you, you want a dentist to be excited about this. Yeah. No, Cosmetic no, no, dentistry is a sect right now. It it really yeah. takes a lot more time and energy to get good at it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, wow, beautiful talk. Amazing. This is amazing. I yeah, really amazing. loved how we got behind the scenes a little bit with you, Marillo. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much Thank you. for being here and, and giving us all of your knowledge. Thank, Thank you. And so keep much doing for what being you here. do so beautifully. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing work. Thank, Thank, Thank you, you so much for being Thank here. Thank you guys for inviting me. Oh, yeah. I hope it was. Thank you guys for listening. Thank, Thank you. you. Until next, See time. next time. Take care. <laughs>